Welcome, everybody. Okay, we're talking about the five-fold gifts. So we're talking about um, the different kinds of spiritual gifts. So there are gifts of the Father, there's gifts of the Son, and there's gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so at some point, I'll break down all the different types of gifts, but we're talking about gifts of the Son. And so as I'm reading you guys Ephesians 4, 7, um, you're going to see how these gifts were given by Jesus. And so these are the gifts of the Son. So it says, Ephesians 4, 7, it says, But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, When he ascended on high, when he went into heaven, basically, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. And then it goes on to say, What does he ascended mean, except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? And it says, He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Okay, now now's where it gets to the giftings. It says, So Christ himself, this is why it's the gifts of the Son, gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip his people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So the whole point of the gifts is to build up the body and create a really strong, like powerful, like movement, basically, of the body of Christ. That's like this amazing, like functioning, like thing that's like alive and active and doing all this stuff. Um, so the heaven to earth giftings are the apostle and the prophet. So, so of the five, there's two that really deal with heaven more, and it's um, the apostles because the apostles' job is to um, sort of establish the culture of heaven on the earth, and then it's the prophets. The prophets bring messages from God or um, kind of like they deal with like um, strongholds and they deal with like the spirit realm a lot. And so it's kind of this bridge between heaven and earth that both the apostles and the prophets function in. And so when you're around people that are always talking about like uh, spiritual encounters or, um, oh, I was in the second heaven or I was in the third heaven, you know, there's like a very strong possibility that those people have prophetic or apostolic giftings because the pastors, teachers, and evangelists are much less concerned with heaven and they're much more concerned with earth. They're much more concerned with the people, instructing the people, helping the people, winning the people. And so their focus is actually on the people, not on heaven as much. And so um, the top two, yeah, so the, the front two are um, apostolic pro and prophet. And so what I wanted to break down with um, apostolic is that that apostle brings um, order and structure to things. So today we're actually going to focus on apostolic um, because I already kind of broke down all the giftings before, but I am going to just sh do a short little run through of all the giftings. But um, apostolic brings order and structure to things. They bring leadership. They bring heavenly alignment to things, um, and then they bring the kingdom of heaven into the earth. That's kind of their main thing. It's like, how do I get everything that exists in heaven to exist on earth? That's their primary, like, every day as they go through life, they're thinking about what's going on in heaven and how do I make that happen here? That's kind of the apostolic calling. Um, and then the prophet is about divine revelation in a lot of ways and the voice of God directions for the people. So like in the Bible, you, the, the prophet would always be like, thus says the word of the Lord. And like, you need to change over here. You need to get aligned with God. And so they're trying to get people that are not following God or not um, interacting with God in the way that he wants them to, to, to get back into truth and get back into relationship. And so there's like a calling of people into relate, right relationship with God. And so that's kind of the prophet. The evangelist is about expansion. And so the evangelist is all about like, how do we take what we have here, this church structure or um, the message of the gospel and how do we get it out to more people? So they're all about expansion. The pastor is about internal resolution. So they're aligning hearts and comforting people. They're sort of the ones that are, you know, always going to make a coffee date with somebody and walk them through, you know, let's read the book of Matthew together. And they're really like taking care of the people and like, hey, how's your, your marriage going or how's your kids doing? doing like those are the people that they just want to hear how everybody's doing um, and then the teacher brings alignment to anything that comes into the body that's not righteous so they're establishing a deeper understanding of scripture and sort of um, helping people like the teacher just wants everybody to know the word it's like it, it, the word is like the number one thing like what does the bible say and like the prophet 
is more about like, what is the spirit of God saying? Like, what do you hear? Like, what is God telling, speaking to you? Whereas the teacher is all about what does the word say? And so that's why we need all of a, all of the gifts, because if you have only prophets in the house, everybody's going to be so focused on the dream that they had and the word from God and the prophetic thing that it's like, but what does the scriptures say? You know, so that's where it's like, you can't have a house full of only prophets. You can't have a house full of only teachers. You can't have just one gifting because then it's like, the fullness isn't there and and you're missing out on more what's uh of what God's trying to bring into um fruition and so um as we're talking about that one thing that I've noticed like in churches is that usually whatever uh the gift of the pastor is that becomes the expression of the rest of the body of Christ uh, or the rest of that church so for instance um I've gone to churches that were led by a prophetically gifted person and almost everybody in that church was prophetically uh, moving. So whether or not that was their main gifting, that was like the thing that was highlighted in that body. Everybody was comfortable doing prophetic ministry. Everybody was comfortable with, we're going to go, we're going to be fasting and praying. We're going to be seeking the Lord on behalf of our nation. Like there was this, like, it's us and God. And like, what is God saying to the people? And when a prophet leads a church, that's the, the dynamic of the church. When a pastor leads the church, the dynamic of the church is different because the pastor is so much about care. So the pastor is going to make sure that we have like, oh, a lot of marriage counseling and we have parenting classes and we have a really strong children's ministry and we have something uh, for the teens and we have this and there's going to be small groups, you know, and the pastor is all about how can we care for the people and make sure nobody gets slips through the cracks. We need something for the addicts. We need to have like, and so the pastor is all like, how are we helping the people? But you're going to notice that like probably the prophets don't feel like that's their place or like maybe some of the teachers are like, you know, there's just going to be some people that maybe feel like, oh, I don't know if this is for me because this isn't my gift. Same with all the other ones. People that are really good at teaching would be like Joel Osteen, right? He's like the teacher. So he's all over YouTube. He's all over, you know, you got thousands of people that will gather to hear what he has to say because he's very good at teaching. And so these are, you know, who knows if he's discipling anyone, who knows if he's winning the lost, who knows if all these other things, but he's a great teacher. And that's the same with like Stephen Furtick, like a really good teacher. So you'll see like some of these um, giftings kind of like working in different um, leaders. But the best case scenario is when you have um, an apostolically gifted leader that is so this is kind of this is kind of like how it works so you have you have your five giftings so your apostle is your thumb right the thumb can teach can touch all of the other fingers so your thumb is the apostle your pointer finger is like the prophet it's like pointing people back to god your middle finger is like the evangelist because it reaches the farthest it's like the longest um, your ring finger is like the pastor because it's like where the, um, your wedding ring goes. So it's kind of like the expression of love for people. They're all about loving people and like connecting with people. And then your pinky finger, that's like your teacher because your teacher can get into the tiny places and like really break things down and really reach where like right into the heart of the matter and bring truth where there's not. And so that's kind of how this works. But the, uh, the reason why the apostle is like your thumb is because it can, it can actually touch on all of the other giftings and it can actually tap into all the other giftings. And so when somebody has an apostolic gift, what they'll do is they'll go into a church setting and they'll, and the purpose of, of an apostle is actually to um, bring order and to bring order from, from heaven's perspective of like the kingdom of heaven being established on earth. And so an apostle is going to go into a setting, they're going to evaluate the situation. So maybe this is in business, maybe it's not even a church, but they're going to evaluate the situation and they're going to say, okay, what's lacking here? What's missing? And then they're going to begin to jump in and fill that role. So maybe in one church is a teacher role, and then maybe they go into another church and it's a different role. And I'm actually going to, um, I want to read to you, um, uh, where we actually get to see Paul doing this as an apostle. And he actually starts to jump into multiple of these different giftings. And so this is in Acts 19.4. Paul said, um, so he's preaching to people. He said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, and that is Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Um, 
And then Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. I don't even know that name. Then went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirit answered them, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them, overpowering them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believe now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. And so if you if you read through this, you can catch Paul's actually jumping into different giftings in this one just little context of about, it's actually breaking down about a three-year time span of what's happening in his ministry. So in the beginning, he's talking about the baptism of repentance, right? So he's actually calling people into repentance and telling them to come and be baptized. So that's kind of like, that's kind of like what a prophet does. But it's also kind of like what an evangelist does. But remember, John the Baptist was a prophet. It was the voice of one in the wilderness. And his job was to reconcile people with God. And so when I'm reading this and he's getting the people reconciled with God and baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus, placing his hands on them, and then they start to speak in tongues and prophesy, that's kind of like a prophetic thing right there. And so then he switches into a teaching gift right after that. It says that he entered the synagogue and he boldly spoke there for three months, arguing persuasively about the kingdom of God. Then it talks about he leaves that and he gets with the disciples and he has discussions daily in the lecture hall. So he goes from being a teacher gift to like, okay, let's get it in a small group. Now he's gotten a small group. He's talking with the pastors and sort of discipling them. And then he goes straight into doing miracles again. So he's kind of like jumping in through all the gifts. Why is that? Because he's an apostle. The apostle jumps into all the giftings. He's not just stuck on one thing. Does this make sense so far? All right. Well, we're almost done um, tonight. I'm just mostly focusing on the apostolic. Um, so after all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem. So now he's going and becoming an evangelist. He goes, he d decides to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. And he says, after I've been there, I must visit Rome also. And he sent two of his helpers, Timothy, Erastus, Matt, whatever. And then they stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. So it's like he stayed in one place. He established all this stuff, trained all these people. And then he's like, I got to get out of here. I got to go spread the word of Jesus to other cities. We need to go to Jerusalem. We need to go through Macedonia. We're going to go to Rome. And he's like switching into this like evangelistic gift. Well, why is Paul like so schizophrenic that he's doing all this stuff? It's because his job is to take the kingdom of heaven and what he knows of the kingdom of heaven and to establish it in the earth. And so he can do that in multiple different ways as an apostolic leader. And so um, so he's kind of tapping into all the gifts right there. And so um, one thing that an, uh, an apostle carries that is um, slightly different than some of the other giftings is they have a greater level of authority. And so the apostle is is really more of an overseer than many of the other gifts. Now, all of the gifts can oversee people. They can all be very big. You know, you think of like the evangelistic gifting of, um, oh, that guy that whose name I can't remember. What's that guy? Come on, you guys. Graham. Graham Billy, Billy Graham. Graham. You think about Billy Graham. He had a massive ministry. So it's not that you can't have a massive ministry if you're not an apostle, but an apostle carries an authority to bring structure and to bring order and to bring organization. What Billy Graham would do is he would have a big event. He would have a giant event and it was a couple of days and he would give the message to everybody. The people would get saved and then he's gone. And it's not like he's planting churches. It's not like he's shifting an entire city. It's not like he's making disciples. He's actually just giving a message and then people are hearing the gospel and then he's out, he's out and that's it. 
And so that's not an apostle. An apostle is actually bringing structure and order and organization so that the kingdom can be established in a place instead of just a message going forward. So does that make sense? So the apostle has a, a greater level of authority. So he, an apostle has authority over a lot of different things. So number one would be like demonic realms. The ap apostolic leader has authority over the demonic because if you if you read about any of the apostles in the Bible, there was many times where they were casting out demons out of people and dealing with the spirit realm and any areas of darkness. And the reason why is because in heaven, there is no demons. There is no darkness. So they're bringing the reality of heaven into the earth. So they have authority over demonic realms. They have authority over sickness and disease. There was always people getting healed. Everybody was getting healed wherever Paul and Peter and all these apostles were going. Uh, and Jesus himself, actually, uh, everything that Jesus did in the Bible he was establishing the culture of heaven on the earth. So wherever Jesus went, darkness had to go. Sickness had to go. Everything had to become aligned with the, the culture of heaven. And so um, they also have authority over regions. So an apostle is going to have um, a, a regional like influence. Like These are people that um, are going to get brought into rooms with people of high influence in, in areas of government at times, in areas of... Um, uh, business and other realms, they're going to have a voice that's a little higher than other people because of the authority and the spirit that they carry, um, which is why you'll see Paul getting called before magistrates and you'll see uh, Jesus gets called before, you know, Pilate and different ones. They're going before governments because they have this governmental authority. Um, and so they bring divine order, they bring divine insight, divine structure, and their job is to honor and nurture each of the five giftings in the body to help them all function in the right way. And so you'll read about um, uh, the people talking about like, oh, we've got all these apostles, they're trying to do all this work, and then who's going to take care of the poor people, and then they appoint somebody to take care of that. And so they're sort of divinely structuring everything so that everybody's needs get met, um, through, through basically activating all the gifts in the body. Um, okay, this is my wrap-up thing. Don't worry, we're not going to read through all these papers. This is just something I'm pulling from, from a different teaching. But um, this, is, this is, Jesus was the number one apostle of like the whole Bible. So when you read anything about Jesus, you can read it through an apostolic lens. He was actually creating apostles. When he actually called his 12 disciples, he was developing them to be apostolic leaders. Every single one of them, yes, they all had giftings. Some of them were teachers. Some of them may have been more pastors. Some of them may have been more prophets, but he trained them all to be apostles and to carry the gifting and the, the call of an apostle so that they could take the, the kingdom and establish it in other places. So Jesus actually was a lead apostle who created 12 other apostles. And so when Jesus, everything that Jesus did, he demonstrated and he taught. And so he would go places and he would demonstrate and he would say stuff like this. He would go and he would say, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And he would explain it. And there's actually over like 133 times where Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven is like, and then he gives an example. And so everything Jesus was trying to do in the Bible was to, to reveal heaven to the people on earth. And that's why when Jesus would be walking and somebody would touch his robe, they would experience healing because to encounter Jesus is to encounter the culture of heaven. And so, um, a lot of what he did was through demonstration. And so you'll notice that people that have a strong apostolic gifting, they don't just talk about Jesus or they don't just talk about heaven. They actually carry that with them. So there's going to be healings. You're going to see people get healed. You're going to see people delivered of demons. There's going to be actual miracles and signs and wonders that are going to flow out of this person because their job is to bring the culture of heaven into the earth. And when I say they, I mean, to be an apostolic people, like to be like Jesus is to become more apostolic because Jesus's disciples all became apostolic. So actually to become like Jesus is to become more apostolic. So you can carry any one of the giftings, but you can, like I said, the apostle taps into all of the giftings. So you can have any one of the giftings. But the more we become like Jesus, the more we are focused on what's happening in heaven, what is heaven like, and how do we make the earth more like heaven? And that becomes our mission and our goal the more we walk with Jesus and become like him. So we all become a little more apostolic the more that we realize that our, our mission on earth is more than just our gifting. It's actually to bring heaven into the earth. Um, and so I, one, one day I will do a teaching on the kingdom of heaven because it's actually one of my main like things that I care about. I've done like a whole like series on it, but, um, if you just read, like just read through, um, Jesus's prayer 
if you read through the, um, when the disciples asked Jesus what to pray, he said, our father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It doesn't get any more apostolic than that. That is literally like the mission of the body of Christ. And that's really what like we're all called to do. And then he goes forward and he talks about, um, kind of how that breaks down. Um, but anyways, one day I'll do a teaching on that too. But, um, so that's kind of it for today. I just wanted to like give a brief overview of apostolic. So apostolic usually is going to be pretty strong in leadership. It's going to be pretty strong in vision, going to be pretty strong in administration, because those are all things that are necessary to put the pieces in place to see an organization and a system and a movement built. And so these people that are really strong in apostolic giftings are going to have uh, leadership that comes out as well. And so that's why you may see them entrepreneurial. You may see them starting businesses. If they're not saved yet, they're going to use these giftings and this grace that's on their life to create other things. These are people that create schools and colleges and things. These are apostolic gifted people. They're trying to um, shift and change something and make it better and, and creating something and shaping the culture of something. That's really what they do. Um, so that's it. Um, I want to pray over us all. And um, if you guys feel like something, what I said, resonates with something that you really are passionate about that may be a sign that you have some of this like apostolic gifting in you where you're like, yeah, I'm always trying to like get more into like seeing God bring freedom to people or like, I really care about like, you know, signs and wonders and miracles and like bringing order, you know, like, I don't know, maybe some of you guys really care about that stuff. And if not, that's okay. But, um, that's just kind of the apostolic gifting. And then what we're going to do is next week, we'll talk about the prophet and we'll go through all five. So we'll do prophet, then we'll do, um, evangelist, then we'll do do pastor and then we'll do teacher so that every week we're focusing on a different one and then eventually you'll sort of like hone in on what you feel like your gifting is um and you can do the test too because that will help so god i just thank you for um our time together i just thank you that you are helping us to learn and grow and figure out who the heck we are and what our mission is and how to do our mission and um, god i just thank you that we get to have times like today where we get to look at the scriptures and look at the Bible and sort of see it in a bigger picture. And God, I just pray that you help us to understand our role in the body of Christ, that we wouldn't just be floating around just doing random jobs, but that we would recognize that we have a call, that we have a mission, and that we have um, a something to fulfill that you put us on this earth to do. And that um, there's a bigger, bigger picture. That we're a part of a bigger plan. And so God, I just pray that you help us to um, watch Walk in step with what you have, the grace that you've put on our life. The gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. And so, God, I pray that we would um, walk in the fear of God, that we wouldn't stumble, that we wouldn't um, uh, just cast aside the things that you're calling us to. But I pray that we would really hone in on who you've called us to be and on walk, walking with the grace that you've given us to walk in. And I thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, okay, well, that's it. Um, does anyone have questions about what we talked about or do you have opinions that you want to share or just sort of anything, any kind of feedback from what we're kind of talking about tonight? Yeah. Oh, you're not raising your hand. Sad. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> no one has any thoughts, opinions, nothing. Do you feel like we should work towards being an apostle? Or not? Um, I would say work towards being like Jesus, and and becoming apostolic will be the fruit of that. Yeah. So I guess the yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so because I think that the fruit of Jesus's ministry was apostolic leaders. So I feel like. Yes, there is like, he gave some to be apostles, he gave some to be prophets, he gave some to be evangelists. So yes, the gifts of the son are given, but I feel like there is something to, to like aspiring to be like Jesus and aspiring to do the things that Jesus did. And so I don't think you have to try to become a gift that you aren't, but I do think that the more like Jesus you are, the more apostolic your the grace on your life is. Like it just is, they sort of go hand in hand. Yeah. Anyone else have questions? Want feedback? Opinions? Usually when people share stuff like this, I usually have like, I don't know, my own like spin on things or like things that I disagree with or whatever. And that's like, this is a good place for that stuff because it's not like I know everything. 
and you guys may have an opinion that I haven't thought of, so you guys can always feel free to share your thoughts. Or not. <laughs> What's his name? The guy who, uh, that you brought up, Joey? What? Billy Graham. Billy Graham. So you said that he's not really apathetic, that he's more just evangelism. Mm -hmm. So how can you be all of them if he can, like, you know what I mean? Like, how can you be an evangelist and go out and do all that and build, I don't know. So... Like, how can you be that effective as an evangelist if you're not also apostolic? Yes, that's what I'm asking, basically. Um, I think that you can be very, very effective in whatever your gift is because that's, like, a very strong gifting that you have. But he may have had, I mean, I don't see him, like, shepherding the people, right? I don't see him creating churches for those people who got saved to be discipled. I don't see him creating a system and a network for all those people to have follow-up and to have, like, let's teach you how to hear from God. Let's teach you guys how to become. Like, I don't see all of that. So the fruit of his life is evangelistic. The fruit of his life is that people who weren't saved become saved. But if, if there's nothing that is establishing the kingdom culture, like if you look at the apostles in the book of Acts, everything they were doing, like when I read about Paul, Paul was in the same city doing that for three years. He was establishing something and whenever Paul would leave a city, he would leave somebody in charge like Timothy. And Timothy, and then he would write letters and he would follow up with that leader. Okay, Timothy, how's everything going? And remember the, the letters to the churches at Ephesus? Hey, over here at Ephesus. And he's writing letters over here because he's following up with the leaders of all the cities where he's actually planted and established a kingdom culture. So that's, I think, the difference is like it's not a hit and run. A hit and run is an evangelist. They, they Here we go. We all got saved. I did my job. I'm out. But the apostle is like I've established something. I'm following up with it. I know how it's going. I have a connection there. Like, I didn't leave them and abandon them all to, like, hopefully follow Jesus. And, like, there's some, like, responsibility, I think is the word. Like, like I don't think that Billy Graham felt responsible for the, the people that he saved. I think he felt responsible to give the message and, like, get them saved. You know what I mean? But I think Paul felt responsible for every city that he went to. 100%. Does anybody else have any questions? So then on, like, if you have the apostolic gift, can you lean towards, like, more towards one way or, or of, like, you're also more into, like, um, like, more prophetic, too, or, like, that's kind of, you can have all of them, but you kind of lean more towards, like, pastoral or something like that as well? Yeah, the um, apostles can dip in and out of all the gifts, depending on, the level of the the apostle as far as like so you could be in a church of 800 people and in your church of 800 people you could have a hundred apostles let's say but that's their main gifting now they're not all functioning as an apostle to the city and in their church on like a paul level right they're just go to that church that's a grace on their life so they probably are all business owners they probably have all started a business. They probably run a business or they're maybe they are in government. Maybe one of them is, uh, you know, a senator. Maybe one of them is on the school board. They're in leadership roles in the community, but they're probably not all establishing the kingdom on the earth. But they're functioning in their gift on some level, depending on their level of training. Jesus trained all of his disciples in the ways of the kingdom. But before he trained them, they were still apostles as far as like they were business people, right? They were out fishing. They owned a fishing business. They had and Jesus them. actually trained, chose people that were already functioning in the gift of leadership. And then he taught them how to take their leadership from heaven to earth, right? And how to make, establish that connection. Um, but anyways, but yeah, the apostle can dip into all the different giftings because they are bringing order to a place that doesn't have order. So like when I got hired at um, um, Cornerstone, my gift looked different there than what it looks like here than what it looks like at my old church because there's a little piece of me that's apostolic and so that little piece of me can transfer over to to fill the need of whatever house I'm in 
but I'm probably not operating at like a Paul level where I'm like, yeah, this whole city and I'm going to take the city and I'm going to, you know, like one day that'd be amazing. Maybe I'll grow and I'll get there. But like right now I'm like a very small level apostolic, like gifting where I'm like, okay, sometimes I'm functioning as an evangelist. Sometimes I'm functioning as a prophet. And so I can do that. But I don't feel like I'm on like Paul's level yet of like, yeah, it's whole city. We're taking it. We're doing this, you know. But it's like if you have like even a piece of that gifting, you're going to be very flexible to tap into all the other giftings. But is there like one you kind of lean more towards, like you feel more comfortable with as well? Um, you, you kind of understand what I'm saying with that? Yeah, I think you're I think you'll always have probably one that you're more stronger in. I'm still trying to figure that out for myself because for my job. I'm a teacher. I teach music, right? Um, but then, like, for my ministry, I'm more of, like, an evangelist because I'm trying to reach lost people and bring them in and get them saved, you know? And then, but then, like, for, with all of that, there's, like, a leadership side to it where it's, like, I'm bringing structure and order and, like, creating my business. I'm, like, putting leaders in place and I have employees and I have to, like, make sure the structure is right. So then there's that side. But then there's also, like, the prophetic side where I'm having, like, dreams about people and I'm, like, hey, I feel like God's saying this to you and that. So I don't know the answer. I just know that whatever I am, like, I function in all of them on a different level at different times. And I feel like... Probably my strongest one is evangelistic as far as all of them. But sometimes I think it's not. Sometimes I think it's profit. So I don't know. I can only speak for myself that it's kind of confusing because, <laughs> because I feel like I'm always dipping into all of them, but I don't have one that's my main one. Yeah. But I feel like it may be diff – yeah, it's going to be different for everyone depending on what your main gifting is. Yeah. Anyone else have questions? Or do you feel like, do you guys feel like you, well, I think what will happen is the longer you are in the body of Christ and the longer you are growing whatever gifts you have, you're going to more easily determine what your main giftings are because you're going to see what you're not more easily to. Like, I know that I'm not very strong pastorally. That's the one that I dip out of the most. Like I, like I can dip into different giftings, but I have a harder time dipping into pastoral gifting because that requires me to have like a lot of compassion for people and a lot of empathy. And I feel like I'm too strong in the area of prophetic where it's just like more of like, this is what God says. Let's bring alignment. Let's fix this versus like, oh, I really want to empathize with like how that feels, you know? So I feel like, yeah. So, some giftings don't work well together. Pastor and prophet doesn't work well together. So I don't know if that makes sense. We're going to get into all of this more over time too. So it'll make more sense. But does anyone else have any questions about apostolic stuff? All right. Well, we'll just wrap it up. Um, I don't have all the answers too. So whatever I say, like, go and research it. See if somebody else has a different opinion and maybe, you know, you'll find out better info than what I have, you know. Um, I If it was me, like, I, I'd be on Google, you know, and just, like, finding everything. I like to read all different opinions. I like to listen to YouTube videos about stuff. I mean, that's just, like, what I like to do in my spare time. So if you guys, you know, aren't into that, that's cool. You can just come here and I'll tell you all the info. <laughs> but if you're really interested, like, just do research on it, and you'll you'll find a lot. There's a lot out there, and so it's pretty interesting. But all right, well that's it. Are we gonna play some games tonight? Why are you look at me? Because you're the game guy. <laughs> you always bring Avalon.